Hi friends, welcome to SNCA Study Club, a platform for CA final students. We are moving towards 16th question A. As a chartered accountant in practice, you are asked to conduct a review of the profit forecast prepared by the company in connection with its application for a term loan from the bank. This is the question that is the practice in chartered accountant who has been asked by a company to review their profit forecast for the purpose of getting loan from the bank. So here we have to determine whether if suppose if the chartered accountant has made such a forecast, in that case can uh, he will be deemed to be guilty of professional misconduct. That is whether there is a chance of treat him as guilty of professional misconduct or not. If yes, as per which clause. So we have to determine this as per this question. Okay, we are moving towards answer. Close question conclusion. This is the format. Okay. So here we have to determine can the uh, can the auditor accept this offer that is they are get they get an offer to review the profit forecast which has been made by the bank. So can the practicing chartered accountant accept the offer this is the question. So we have to remember different parts. First of all check whether there exists any connecting clause and essay. Yes clause is existing which is the clause clause 3 part 1. Second schedule, right? Which is stating that CA in practice shall be deemed to be guilty of professional misconduct if they allow to use his name or firm name in connection with preparation of estimation of earning that is contingent upon future transaction. So, this has to be kept in mind and such uh, it has been leads to a belief that he has vouched for the accuracy. That is, he have to he can participate in preparation of such forecast but at the same time he has to indicate that he is not responsible uh, to determine whether the forecast is correct etc that is he had not voiced for the accuracy that is you have to remember what SAE 3400 this standard so standard also you have to remember that is as per clause or essay both are provided in our format Close we have indicated clause 3 part 1 second schedule SAE 3400 which is stating that it is the responsibility of the management to prepare such a forecast. They are also responsible to identify the sources of information to make the forecast. They are responsible to make appropriate assumption and at the same time they are also responsible to make what appropriate disclosure that is management responsibility. Source of information. Assumption Preparation of forecast Forecast Then Appropriate disclosure And Auditor shall be asked to examine these supporting evidence and information. That is, auditor is not responsible to examine the accuracy of the forecast. That is, they are not vouching these documents or these uh, source of information as assumptions to determine whether the forecast is correct or not. They are not uh, what they are not uh, examining or they are not vouching the accuracy of the forecast. So. They are mainly participating in this preparation of forecast only for the purpose of enhancing the credibility. That is, chartered accountant may participate subject to these conditions. Plus, they have to indicate that they are not responsible and they are not even vouched for the accuracy. So, as per close 1, it has been stated that, close, sorry, close 3, it has been stated that CA in practice shall be deemed to be guilty of professional misconduct if he allow to use his name or firm name in preparation of estimation of earnings that is contingent upon future transaction in such a manner that lead to believe that he had vouched for the accuracy. So, he can participate but not in the manner that create what he, uh, that create to or that lead to believe that he had vouched for the accuracy. So, if all these conditions are satisfied, then the chartered accountant may allow to use his name or firm name in preparation of the profit forecast. Right? Then, question. So, here, the concern uh, an offer has been obtained or offer has been obtained to concern chartered accountant to review the profit forecast which has been prepared by the company so as to obtain a loan. So, if these conditions are satisfied, last one, conclusion. If all these conditions are satisfied, that is, e in compliance with what SAE 3400 concerned chartered accountant may, uh, may review the profit forecast. So, 
എസ് എ ഇ സോറി ത്രീ തൗസൻഡ് ഫോർ ഹൺഡ്രഡ് കംപ്ലീറ്റ് ഓർ നോട്ട് കംപ്ലീറ്റ് ഇഫ് കംപ്ലീറ്റ് ദ ക്യാൻ ആക്സെപ്റ്റ് ഓഫർ ദാറ്റ് ഈസ് റിവ്യൂ ഫോർകാസ്റ്റ് നോ മീൻസ് ഈഫ് ആക്സെപ്റ്റഡ് സി എ വിൽ ബി ഡീം ടു ബി ഗിൽട്ടി ഓഫ് പ്രൊഫഷണൽ മിസ്കണ്ടക്ട് ദിസ് ഈസ് ദ ആൻസർ ഐ ഹോപ്പ് യു ഹാവ് ക്ലിയർഡ് വിത്ത് ദിസ് ദാറ്റ് ഈസ് സിക്സ്റ്റീൻ എ ക്വസ്റ്റ്യൻ വി ഹാവ് ആൻസേഡ് നൗ ഓക്കെ വി ആർ മൂവിംഗ് ടുവേഡ് സിക്സ്റ്റീൻ ബി വി ആർ മൂവിംഗ് ടുവേഡ്സ് ദ സിക്സ്റ്റീൻ ബി ക്വസ്റ്റ്യൻ എക്സ് ചാർട്ടഡ് അക്കൗണ്ട് ആൻഡ് അവൈൽഡ് ലോൺ അഗേൻസ് ഹി ഷെയർസ് ഹെൽ ഇൻവെസ്റ്റ്മെൻറ്റ് ഫ്രോം എ നാഷണലൈസ് ബാങ്ക് ഹി ഇഷ്യൂ ടു ചെക്ക് ടുവേഡ്സ് റീപേയ്മെൻറ്റ് ഓഫ് ദ സെൽ ലോൺ ബോത്ത് ദ ചെക്ക് വർ റിട്ടേൺ ബൈ ബൈ ദ ബാങ്ക് വിത്ത് ദ റിമാക്സ് റെഫർ ടു ഡ്രോയർ which is stating that he is a chartered accountant that is a member of institute he has uh, obtained a loan from the bank against his investment in a nationalized bank and for the purpose of the repayment of this said loan he has issued two check for the repayment but both two check has been returned back by the bank and they have also indicated that uh, refer to drawer so we have to determine whether the concerned chartered accountant is guilty of professional misconduct or other misconduct we have to refer close and then as a subject we have to indicate the same question and last one is the conclusion so here we are moving towards close so when a check has been returned back without making the repayment it is creating what a disrepute to our profession so which is the clause that is providing uh, any info with respect of disrepute yeah it is about what other misconduct other misconduct right so which is that clause clause to part 4 first schedule right which is stating that a member of institute shall be deemed to be guilty of other misconduct as per clause 2 okay if in the opinion of counsel he bring disrepute to the profession or institute and as a result of his action which may whether or not related to his professional work so he in this given case he has taken loan against his investment so it is clear that he has taken loan for the personal purpose right so section 21 you have to indicate section 21 which is stated that disciplinary action shall be taken against a chartered accountant that is a member of institute if he found guilty of professional misconduct or other misconduct that is disciplinary action it can be either professional misconduct or other misconduct so in the given case what is happening we have to check the same so other misconduct means it may or may not related to his professional work right it may but at the same time it has been done in the professional capacity but is not in the uh, it may or may not in the technical nature so he have to maintain what integrity including personal life right that is he have to follow he have to follow what the standard of integrity honesty that is our oh, highest standard of integrity that is they have to follow highest standard of integrity right high standard of integrity have to be followed by a chartered accountant include sorry one minute integrity have to be followed by the chartered accountant including in the personal life right one minute friends including in the personal life so what is happening here the check has been dishonored it is stating that it is also creating a disrepute to the profession or to uh, the institute so can he guilty of professional misconduct or not this is the question then we have to indicate what negotiable instrument act what was provided in this negotiable instrument act were any check drawn by a person where it has been drawn by the concerned chartered accountant for the discharge of any liability written by the bank unpaid either because of insufficiency of fund or the check amount exceeds the arrangement made by the drawer of the check the drawer of such check shall be deemed to have committed an offence that is if he uh, sent that is drawer provided some check but the same has been written by the bank because of insufficiency of fund or the uh, check check amount is exceeds what the arrangement which has been made by the drawer in that case drawer will be deemed to be have uh, committed some offenses so here 
the check is dishonored as per the question but at the same time it has not clarified whether it has been dishonored because of insufficiency of funds so we have to indi uh, indicate what negotiable instrument act drawer offense when it will be treated as offense dishonored it can be either because of insufficiency of fund one minute insufficiency of fund or check amount exceed arrangement made by drawer in that case drawer commit an offence as per the negotiable instrument act then we have to explain the question as per the question the check which has been issued by concerned chartered accountant who is the drawer it has been dishonored by the bank but the reason has not been specified that is check dishonored dishonored but reason not specified right reason not specified so last conclusion last one it is the conclusion part if the check was dishonored because of insufficiency of fund if dishonored because of insufficiency of fund or in that case ca will be deemed to be guilty of professional misconduct otherwise no guilty of professional sorry other misconduct i hope you have understand what i have provided here first of all you have to indicate clause to part 4 first schedule then section 21 clause to part 4 uh, first schedule stating that ca that is a member of institute shall be deemed to be guilty of other misconduct if he brings in the opinion of counsel if he brings disrepute to the profession or institute as a result of his action which may or may not related to the professional work so here what uh, as per section 21 disciplinary actions can be taken against the chartered accountants if you have committed any professional misconduct or other misconduct then high higher level of standard have to be followed our higher level of standard of integrity have to be followed by the chartered accountant including his personal life so as per the negotiable instrument act drawer of a check shall be deemed to be committed an offence if he if the check has been dishonored because of the insufficiency of fund or the arrangement which has been made by the uh, drawer is less than the check amount right so in that case it will be treated as what drawer committed an offence so in the given question the concerned chartered accountant uh, issue sorry check which has been issued by the concerned chartered accountant has been dishonored but the reason is not specified if the uh, check has been dishonored because of insufficiency of fund then it will create what a disrepute to the profession so he will be deemed to be guilty of other misconduct this is the answer okay so here we are moving towards 16c question which is stated that bc and company a firm of chartered not uh, not company bc and co a com, uh, firm of chartered accountants accepted assignment that is audit assignment or assignment for audit under state level vat act now vat is not there so we can remo uh, state it as what gst okay gst audit without any prior communication with the pre previous auditor this is the same case we know the case first of all firm accepted audit engagement without communicating to the previous auditor that is predecessor auditor they were not communicated to the previous auditor so here we have to determine the relevant clause and as well as what what will be the conclusion that is whether the firm is guilty of professional misconduct or not that is whether this communication is required for all types of audit engagement okay so which is the clause clause 8 part 1 first schedule right which is stating that c 
CA and practice shall be deemed to be guilty of professional misconduct uh, if he accepted the audit engagement which was held uh, if he accepted the audit, uh, the position of an auditor or office of an auditor which was previously held by other chartered accountant without first communicating him in writing so the communication has to be in writing then registered post acknowledgement due such a communication then why such communication because to determine whether there exist any circumstances that that treat or that is stating that no to accept or that warrants no to accept the audit engagement or whether uh, such an auditor has been changed because of any qualification in the audit report or whether such the predecessor auditor expressed his opinion or his unwillingness not to continue with the client because of any inherent limitations of the administration uh, administration etc so such a communication is required plus irrespective of what type of audit it can be what statutory audit it can be internal audit so not internal audit it can be tax audit it can be gst audit it may be any type of audit without determining the nature of that audit such a communication is required so first of all you have to indicate clause 8 then such a communication is required why such communication is required then it is required irrespective of the type of audit that is here gst audit also that is the communication is also applicable to the gst audit also so what is happening in the question in the question the firm has been accepted the audit engagement that is gst audit engagement without communicating to the predecessor auditor so uh, what is happening here they were making such a they were making or they are accepting the audit engagement without making proper communication so what, what is the conclusion communication is required irrespective of what nature of audit irrespective of type or nature of audit that is incoming auditor shall acts, uh, shall communicate to the predecessor auditor in writing that uh, first communication is required before accepting the audit engagement so here the firm is guilty of professional deemed to be guilty of professional misconduct deemed to be guilty of professional misconduct this is the answer such a communication is required okay so here we are moving towards 16d it is stating that what mr that is m a chartered accountant in practice who is the statutory auditor of s limited for the year ended 31st march 2016 in jan 2016 he was appointed as the director in its limited which is the holding of s limited so in this case we have to determine whether the m that is m who is a chartered accountant and who was appointed as an auditor of uh, S limited is deemed to be guilty of professional misconduct we have to indicate relevant clause questions and as well as conclusion this is the format first of all we have to indicate what relevant clause did you remember any clause that is providing with respect of directorship etc can a chartered accountant that is a member of institute or who is a practicing chartered accountant may be appointed as a director yeah he can be appointed as a director so which clause is stating that engages in any business or occupation yeah clause 11 clause 11 part 1 first schedule right which is stating that ca in practice shall be deemed to be guilty of professional misconduct if he engages in any business or occupation other than the professional chart, uh, other than the profession of chartered accountant unless or without obtaining the prior permission of the council okay so they have what general permission and as well as specific permission is required so as per the general permission it has been stated that a chartered accountant may be appointed as a director of a company that is directorship is allowed right but not in a company or entity that that affect independence right so SA 200 this have to be indicated that is CA have to work express an opinion that is he have to be independent straightforward etc so if he is appointed as a director of a company where he is having any interest or which may affect his independence so he may not be in a position to express the opinion so he may be allowed to appoint as a director subject to this condition that is he shall not be in a company or entity which may affect his independence that is required to be or as per what essay 200 right then 
than what which is the close as per your opinion so this have to be what answer so uh, then we can be uh, also explain about section 141 which is explaining the qualification and disqualification of auditor that is essay sorry section 141 right he shall that is a director shall not have any interest in the company or so in the given case what is happening b question explain what is provided in question here m who is a chartered accountant has been appointed as a statutory auditor of s limited but at the same time he has been appointed as the director of s limited which is the holding of s limited so in this case what is happening auditor of a company is holding directorship in the entity which may affect independence right so in the given case if he is continuing to do so he will be deemed to be guilty of professional misconduct right this is the question if he accuses any such interest he either he should vacate or resign from no th this is not required actually he will be deemed to be guilty of professional misconduct he know that okay so in the given case he will he is deemed to be guilty of professional misconduct right so in the given case the auditor that is m shall not do so